It is with such heartfelt honor that I get to introduce our next guest. Dr. Mark Golston is a legend in so many different ways that we are just privileged to have him here with us today. Originally a UCLA professor of psychiatry for over 25 years, a former FBI and police hostage negotiation trainer. And now Mark is an influencer who helps influencers become more influential. I don't know anybody who wouldn't just love to sit down and talk to Mark about absolutely anything. And that's what we're gonna do right now. Welcome, Mark. Thank you so much for being here. You know, one of the great things about having people say nice things about you is it gives you something to live up to. <laughs> it's funny that you say that because after I get nice introductions, I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, who are they talking about? And I'm looking around to see who else is there. But I'm glad you feel that way. And I don't think you'll have any problem living up to this because this conversation is really just made for you. It is our Father's Day show. And we are gonna have that conversation about connecting across generations with our loved ones and just really try to, I don't know, touch on the stuff that's important to us in our hearts and in our lives. And you have a dream that I know about of creating a summit or a program, an event for the three Gs, the three generations, the retired, the midlife vital and the younger generation. And I know that in our family, all generations are represented, but it's not so everywhere. So let's talk about, you know, where did this idea come from? What are you doing with it? How can we actually help make this thing happen? Well, thank you. And the, and the three Gs are those generations. And I like to break them down into the younger generation are focused on a piece of the action. That's about becoming successful. Uh, uh, they, they want to be able to be, be able to make money in their career, uh, connect in their, uh, in a relationship. And the second, uh, the second generation, it's about peace of mind. How do you get a sense of work-life balance? You know, in this day and age, maybe you've been divorced, but you don't want to keep getting divorced. And how can you also balance out taking better care of yourself? You know, when you're in the younger generation, it's amazing how you don't have to look after uh, your health as much as you should. And so that middle generation is a, a peace of mind, balancing everything. And the final one is peace on earth. And I'm, I'm, I'm at that stage of my life because I start to think about, you know, did I do enough for the world? Um, why was I here? Uh, and again, a lot of our focus is, did I do my best in raising my children? Uh, was, I, was I present? Was I able to balance being a bit of a workaholic, but also being able to give my family my undivided attention uh, which is often a challenge, you know, because a lot of times when you're in the, that younger generation, uh, you're, you're not able to focus on conversations. You're not able to be entirely present. And we can frustrate the people that we love. And one of the dangers you run into, and you'll see this with some people who were very successful, but they were a bit workaholics, is that their families kind of substituted in. You know, if, if you're fortunate, they substituted in other friends, maybe parents of friends that they could connect with. Uh, you hope that they didn't substitute in drugs. But often once they've substituted that and you are retired and you say, I'm available, I'm available, you know, that bus has left. <laughs> mm -hmm. So how do you reconnect with them? Well, it's interesting, and you told we, a story earlier about when your family gets together and the two younger generations are all checking their phones and then you reach for your phone to check yours because you're being totally ignored and they're like, wait a minute, you're checking your phone. Yeah. <laughs> like there is a double standard. And then of course, you know, how do we cross that divide? How do you get people to put their phones down and actually connect? Well, uh, 
if you if you look behind me, there's a there's a poster of a, I've written a bunch of books, and this one I seem to be best known for, and it's about how to how to be a better listener. Mm. And uh, about a year and a half ago, I spoke in Moscow with a Nobel Prize winner named Daniel Kahneman, uh, who wrote a book called Thinking Fast and Slow. And my books have done pretty well in Russia, so they had me there. But my whole focus in that presentation to about a thousand Russian business people, and I've been trying to teach this around the world, is that if you can focus on what people are listening for, and just be curious about what they're listening for without trying to push your agenda on them. People lean towards you. So for instance, I'm guessing that your viewers and your listeners, uh, if they're slightly older, what they're listening for is, can you give us insight into ourselves? Can you give us ways to have a more fulfilling life now that we've transitioned? Can you give us information that is doable by us immediately? Uh, can we take something away that we can use today to make our lives better? Uh, now, I may be wrong, and you know your audience, but if you can just be curious what people are listening for, people will lean towards you. So if we did this summit what I would love to do is have the different generations kind of ask each other, what are you listening for from our generation? Find out what they're listening for. Uh, I, I, something else I would love to cross the generations is to have people share what is something that my generation doesn't understand or appreciate about your generation and that we always get wrong. And, and see what kind of conversation that that could create. You know, Mark, yeah, I'm to me, like all these questions, you should be putting together a little box set of dinner questions when the family gets together, because this would just generate that conversation around the table when everybody is present. You could open up a whole new level of connectivity right there at home. Well, I'm going to tell you about a future guest you're going to have on your show. His name is Greg Gregory Stock, and he wrote a book called The Book of Questions. It was an iconic book about 30 years ago, sold millions. And he's a scientist. It was something that he did on a lark, and it's probably the most famous thing that he's ever done. But part of what he's working on now and he and he and he's be launching it, and people will be able to sort of check it out. Is a game built on questions because what he's trying to do is involve people by having better conversations. So I'll give you an example. One of the things that made me crazy, it, the kind of question, uh, and and this is, and there'll be all these kinds of questions that you pose. So the first one that caught my attention is he said, "Imagine your." Uh, in a restaurant, and you're a young person, and, uh, and two tables away from you is either a man or a woman who is the perfect fit for you. If you've ever been looking for love, if you've ever been looking for companionship, if you've ever been looking for just the perfect match for you, that person is it. So here's the question. Uh, you get to go over there and have a relationship with them. But six months from the date you meet, they step off a curb and they are killed by a bus. Do you still get involved with them? That's such I an think that's an, um, that's an amazing question. That's an, a, it, seriously, like that says so much about who you are as a person, your answer to that. Oh, yeah. Question. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I just thought this is amazing. Well, would you rather have loved and lost and had perfect love and or, or would you not want to? Um, but but it's going to be filled with questions like that. And so you'll have when he fully launches it, you'll have him on the show. But it's just uh, uh, because he be he believes what happens is we, we've lost the ability to ask questions that cause us to want to be curious and engage with each other more. Mm. I agree. 
I agree. Mark, so, we so are going to have to bring you back because we could do this for a day or oh. two. It sounds like there's a summit in our future. I just feel like I'm just getting hitting the tip of the iceberg. I right? know. Really, Mark, we have got to have you come back on. And use some of your hostage negotiator. It, wait, is it hostage? No, FBI. And wait, hostage. The police. Yeah. You were a hostage negotiator. So. Yeah. Oh no, there's so he, there, it, the depth is unbelievable. We uh, we have yet to touch the tip of the iceberg. Will you please come back and give me more advice? <laughs> uh, I would absolutely do that. Uh, do I have time? Do I have one and a half minutes to give you two absolute amazing hacks, relationship yes. hacks? And please, please, Lord, just one okay, and a half. I'll, okay, I'll, I'll do it quick. I'll do it. I'll do it quickly. So, so uh, what a, what will help a relationship is if a man says to a woman. Have I ever made you feel that you're not worth my undivided attention? And every woman has felt that. And when the woman says yes, uh, and if you ask the woman, how frustrating and upsetting is that at its worst? If you're lucky, the woman will say it's pretty bad. If you're the man, you say, and you see the pain, not the anger, and just say, I'm sorry, I'm going to do better. And for the woman, the hack is you can say to the man, have I ever made you feel that whatever you say or whatever you do is wrong? <laughs> mm. You know, because because men often feel that way. No, do it this way. Why are you doing it that way? No, you shouldn't be doing this. But the point is you're inviting the other person to get that off their chest. And when you can see this, the, the underbelly of hurt underneath the anger, yeah. it can be a breakthrough. Oh my gosh, which is just exactly what I just described to you about our common argument. Thank you so much, Mark. I really appreciate your time and and learned it so much today. And Lauren, always the best guest. Always. Mark how, Mark, how can our viewers find you? Where can they get more information? I want them to see your books and everything else that you've done. Well, uh, go to markgoulston.com because I put stuff up there. Um, I have a new course out, a new audio course on Himalaya.com, which is an audio version of Masterclass. And if you can type in Himalaya.com forward slash defeat, and remember the promo defeat, my course is defeating self-defeat. And it's, if you know, if you like how I communicate, uh, there's like, I think 12 or 13 little audio episodes and you can hear them for free if you put in that promo code. Super. Thank you so much, Mark. I know we're going to be hearing from you again and we really appreciate you coming on today. Well, thanks for having me and uh, happy Father's Day and belated Mother's Days. Absolutely. Happy days all and we'll be back.